Hello viewers. I am Dr. K S R Radhika, working as associate professor in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering, S R K R Engineering College, Bhimbaram, Andhra Pradesh. In this session, I am going to explain the software architecture of embedded systems. So, in this session, I am going to explain about function queue scheduling architecture. The main objective of today's session is to understand function queue scheduling architecture. In the previous sessions, we have already seen two, di two, two different architectures that can be used in embedded systems. So one is the round robin architecture and another one is round robin with interrupts architecture. In round robin architecture, all the tasks are given equal priority and whichever IO device requires the service, that particular IO device is provided the service. In the case of round robin with interrupts architecture, here interrupts are being added for the round robin architecture. So interrupts are given here high priority. So high priority are being, uh, the, high, the interrupts are being given high priority than the task code. So that's why, so first of all, the high priority interrupts will be executed because they are being written as the interrupt and then your task code will be executed. Suppose while the task code is being executed, suppose if an interrupt occurs, so then the priority will be given for the interrupt. So the task code will be suspended and then interrupt will be executed. So that is the difference between the round robin and round robin with interrupts architecture. But uh, but when compared with the round robin, the round robin with interrupts architecture is better. But the round robin with interrupts architecture is uh, in, that, in that architecture also we have some limitations. So for example, suppose if some low priority interrupt is being executed at the same time, suppose if some high priority interrupt occurs, so then this high priority interrupt has to wait until that particular interrupt is completed. Suppose if it is some lengthy process, lengthy interrupt, so then it has to wait until it completes. So that is the worst case scenario for uh, high priority interrupt. So that is the only, that is the limitation for the round robin with interrupts architecture. So whenever you are comparing these architectures, the round robin architecture is a simple architecture. When compared to Round robin, the round robin with interrupts is a little more sophisticated architecture. So, but this round robin with interrupts is also having some limitations. So, that's why we have one more, another uh, architecture that is function queue scheduling architecture. So, here that uh, here we, we will also, here the, in this architecture, that particular limitation is also being uh, modified. And this is another architecture that can be used for your embedded systems. So this is a still more sophisticated architecture. So it is more sophisticated architecture than the round robin and also the round robin with interrupts architecture. Here uh, in the case of round robin, uh, uh, round robin with interrupts architecture, you have already introduced the interrupts concept. So here also the same interrupts, interrupt routines are being used but here one more additional thing that is added is function pointers for these interrupt proteins is added in this function queue scheduling architecture so interrupt proteins so what will what will happen is so there whenever the interrupt occurs immediately the isr will be executed here what happens is whenever the interrupt occurs the interrupt will add a function pointer to the queue of function pointers for the main function to call. So here what we will do is we will maintain a queue of function pointers. So we will maintain a separate queue for all the interrupt routines to handle. So in this queue, whenever an interrupt occurs, that interrupt, that interrupt related function pointer will be placed onto the queue. So and this main function will call all the all the interrupt routines from the queue that is it will read the function pointers and then it, it will call each and every interrupt routine that is the 
that is the main thing that has been introduced in this function queue scheduling architecture. So that means here we will maintain a queue of pointers. That is a queue of pointers. So here for each and every interrupt, you will add a function pointer to the queue. To the queue of function pointers. And fr uh, from this queue of function pointers, the main will read each and every function pointers and it will execute that particular interrupt routine. So here uh, the main routine reads the pointers from the queue. It reads the pointers from the queue and then calls the functions and then it calls the functions. Okay, so that is how it will be done in the case of function queue scheduling architecture. Main can call the functions based on a preset priority, providing better response times for higher priority tasks. So here one main advantage that has been introduced is here whenever you are placing the function pointers onto the queue. So already we told that for each interrupt the priorities will be assigned. So once the priorities are being assigned, whenever you are placing these uh, function pointers onto the queue, so they are arranged based on their priorities. So for example, suppose if you have uh, two, two, function, uh, two, function, uh, two function pointers, one is of priority two and another one is of priority five, then what happens is, the main function the main function calls the priority with which is having with high priority okay so that's why in in such a situation what will happen is it will call a interrupt with the high priority so that's why what happens is here the high priority task response time will be reduced so it will get better response time that is the main advantage of this function queue scheduling architecture. So here you will maintain the queue of function pointers and this queue of function pointers is also maintained by the priorities. That is main important. So that's why what happens in the case of function queue scheduling architecture is the worst case response for the highest priority task can be reduced. So because of, re, because of arranging uh, the function pointers in your queue by the priorities. So what happens is here the worst case response for the high priority task can be reduced. So this, this cannot be reduced in the case of previous architectures that already we have discussed. So now we will see how, how you can write the pseudo code for this function queue scheduling architecture. So this is the software routine for, for function queue scheduling architecture. So first of all, here you are maintaining queue of function pointers. So that means what? Here, first of all, you should maintain a queue. You should maintain a queue and then all the function pointers will be written onto the queue and the main function will read these function pointers from the queue and it will handle each and every task. So this is, that's why here you have to maintain a queue of function pointers. Suppose if you assume that you have two devices in your system, device A and device B. So these are, these are written as the interrupt handlers. So for example, for device A, so you are writing it as void interrupt B handle device A. So in this one, what you will do, you will write, take care of IO device. So once, once it uh, comes to this uh, device A means, so that means what? Now device A requires some service. So now what you have to do? You have to take care of that device A. So then what you will do? In the case of round robin with interrupts architecture, what you are doing here, just you are placing you are you are uh, you are uh, changing that is you are setting a flag to true so for each and every device you are maintaining flags and you are you are setting that flag to true so that is you are saying that 
that particular device if it is true means you are saying that that particular device needs service but here what we will do instead of setting of the flag here what we will do is we will we will put a pointer so here function underscore a is a pointer for the io device a so you will put this function pointer on to the queue of function pointers so that means what you are you are placing this function underscore a on to the queue just you are adding function underscore a pointer on to the queue similarly suppose if you want for uh, if you want service for device b so then what do you have to do so the it is saying that now i want the control that is the device device uh, b wants the control and then what you are doing so you are placing the function underscore b on to the queue so you are, uh, here you are putting the function a on to the queue and here you are putting the function b on to the queue now in the main function in the main function what you have to do is um you are giving the continuous loop and then in this continuous loop you are checking for the function pointers on the queue so that is you are reading one by one function pointers from the queue so so what you are doing so until the function the queue contains any function pointers on the queue it will be continuously reading one by one like that so uh, while so this is done until when until the queue of function pointers is empty suppose if the function there are no uh, function pointers on the queue so that means what no device want any service so then the at that time only it will be idle so until then it will be continuously reading one by one uh, function pointers that is whatever we have written here function a function b like this it will read one by one functions and it will provide the service for, for that particular device so it will be calling like that so then what we were doing just we are writing it as call first function queue on the queue so first you will read the first function pointer and then it should be provided that particular service so it will call that first function on the queue first function pointer on the queue so suppose if function a wants the service so then what happens it will call this function so function um, so you have to write again the functions for these devices a and b so that is void function underscore a so you are you have already put this function pointer on the queue so once this particular function pointer has been called so then the control comes here and it will handle actions required by device a now suppose if it uh, reads the function pointer p means so then uh, function underscore b this function will be executed for you and here it will provide the service that is required by device b so this is how you can implement the software routine for function queue scheduling algorithm so the advantages of function queue scheduling algorithm are so main advantage is it reduces the worst case response time for high priority task code so that is because so whenever you are placing the function queue point function pointers on to the queue so you are placing them based upon the priorities so once they are placed on priorities so uh, suppose if some high priority task is arrived on to the queue then automatically uh, the low priority task or interrupts they will be uh, kept in a waiting state and um, and this high priority task will be given the service first so that's why here the worst case response time is reduced in the case of function queue scheduling algorithm so and another advantage is this is much better than round robin with interrupts which has worst case which has the worst case response equal to sum of all the task code for other devices so here it in the case of round robin with interrupts architecture it has to wait until all the task code of all the other devices has been executed but here no need to wait for that much of time because it is given high priority so from the queue itself because it is of high priority that will be read first and it will be given the service these are the advantages of function queue scheduling algorithm the disadvantages are 
the highest priority task worst case response will be more in case of longest task started execution before the isr put the highest priority task in the queue suppose uh, even though your highest priority task it has been arrived on to the queue before that one suppose some uh, some isr or uh, some some isr has been being executed it is currently being executed which is of some lengthy process so in that came in that uh, case it has to wait until that lengthy process has been completed that is the only disadvantage of this particular function queue scheduling because it it cannot interrupt in between so it cannot pre preempt in the middle of that particular uh, routine so that's why it has to wait until it it is being completed until it completes so then only even though it is high priority then only you can provide the service for this particular high priority task so one more uh, disadvantage for this uh, function queue scheduling algorithm is so whenever you are placing this function pointers on to the queue always the high priority task is being given the service first so by giving the service to the high priority task so sometimes the low priority task may never be executed because always whenever it is taking it is reading from the queue always it is taking the high priority uh, function pointer so that's why what will happen so the low priority task may never execute so that is one disadvantage with function queue scheduling algorithm uh, function queue scheduling architecture so finally in this uh, session we have learned in detail about function queue scheduling architecture if you like my video please like share and subscribe to our channel thank you